I'm a first year occupational therapy student at Midwestern University. And today I'm going to be talking to you about my OT kit, which is for painting. Um, so I'm just going to go through everything that I put in the kit and why I included it and also some ways you can adapt the items that I have um, for individuals with varying needs. So first I'm just going to take everything out of the kit and then I'll break it down and explain more why I put it in. So first off I got a whole bunch of paint brushes. I also have a little cup for water and I have a little, um, little tray here that I just took off of a tin a little Christmas tan, I just took the lid off of it. I also have a bunch of different paints that I will talk about. I have a little, little palette here and some foil. Um, I have some little foam cylinders, which I will explain. The cotton balls. Um, I have some canvas, I have two different types of canvas. So I have some flat canvas and some more raised, like, stretch canvas. And I also have a little stand that you can put the canvas in, or you can also just put the canvas directly on the table. That is up to you. And last, I have just a little pad of paper here um, in case the individual wants to paint on paper instead of canvas. That is their choice, so I also have that. So to start off, I'm going to talk about paint, which I think is a very important part of painting. And so I included a bunch of different types of paint. So I have some watercolor paint, I have oil paint, I have a couple bags of acrylic paint, and I just added a bunch of different types just because painting is a very broad medium, and so I wanted to at least offer some options um, for the individual in case they want to paint with watercolor, or maybe the next day they want to try acrylic or mix a couple together. Um, I just wanted them to have that option if they wanted to. So after having varieties of paint, I have a bunch of different sizes. So as you can see, I have little small bottles, medium, um, some larger bottles, and then like a big little pint here. And so with the, each bottle is why I have the different sizes is to kind of display that some bottles will be harder for individuals to use while others might be a little bit easier. So these small bottles, for instance, um, they are harder to open. So like you have to, some of them really, you have to twist them off pretty hard to get them open and you would need more finger strength um, and like a precision grip in order to squeeze the paint out of these bottles, which could be difficult for some individuals, which is why I would also have the medium or large size bottles, which could be easier for them to squeeze the paint out of, or even just a little like half a pint um, container, a little sample paint, which they wouldn't have to even squeeze or pour the paint out of, they can just dip the brush directly into this. Um, also, the Bottles that I have um, are different ways to open. So like I said, this one's a twist top. I also have some that are pop tops. Um, so again, this can really help an individual who maybe can't twist off a bottle, but could maneuver the pop top or use something else to pop open the thing that could help them. So they also have that option. So next I'm gonna talk about the brushes. And so I've got a lot of different brushes. Um, I have some skinny ones, a little more medium sized ones. And I do have some larger brushes here. Um, so the brushes themselves can be an adaptation, where if somebody can't hold a skinny one, they can use a thicker one and still be able to paint. Um, the only problem with the thicker, the thicker handle brushes tend to be the ones that are bigger bristles, and if somebody wants to do more detailed painting, it could be difficult for them to find a thicker brush um, that is also thin at the top, which is why I have these little foam cylinders. So these cylinders I actually bought a Target. They were a little children's like ninja toy, um, and I just ripped the string out of one end what you can do is put a paintbrush through the hole of the cylinder and that will widen the grip while allowing them to use a more precision brush. Um, so these little foams, you can get them a bunch of different places. You can get PVC pipe insulation, noodles, anything that'll um, fit the type of brushes that they want to use um, and will also be varying diameters for their needs as well. Um, I also have some of the brushes just have little grips on them which can just help if maybe they have poor finger strength um, keep a hold of the brush. And then finally, I have these little Velcro straps here. And so what you could do with these is maybe for somebody who is unable to grasp items um, at all, you can just kind of Velcro the paintbrush to their hand and around their wrist like so, and that would allow them to paint with their whole arm if they're unable to use their fingers. 
Um, I also have a little sponge, a little sponge brush. You can also just use a sponge itself. You don't have to have one that has a handle or little cotton balls. They're bigger cotton balls. And with these, you can just dip them straight into the paint. Um, maybe even just put it in the palm of their hand and use it like that, or just use a big sponge even and sponge around. Um, or, hey, use your fingers, finger paint. It's fun. I, I still think it's fun. It's not just for little kids. It can be for adults, too. So next, I'll talk about my little palettes here. So this is just a standard palette. You can get, you can get ones bigger, you can get ones smaller. Um, the only problems that for these for some people is that you do have to be precise and calibrate your hand movements in order to squeeze the paint into this, which could be difficult for individuals, which is why I also included this foil. Um, this, you know, most households have foil, and you can use any type of foil, or even maybe like ceramic wrap plastic, something like that, where they can squeeze the paint out, and that wouldn't necessarily matter if they put too much or too little because they're not going to overflow, overflow one of these little circles. Um, and this is also easier to clean up if the person is worried about that. So my last adaptation here are my water receptacles, or I would say. Um, so I have a cup and then a little tin, which I'll talk about next. So the cup, you know, just typical painting using cleaner brushes. Um, but again, for somebody who has problems with fine motor skills of their upper extremity or like control of their upper extremity, they might be worried that they're going to tip over the water and get the water everywhere, which is why I included this little tin, because it'll be a wider, lower base of support um, to where they can just wash their whole brush with a greater surface area without having to worry about spilling water all over the place. Uh, so these are just some supplies I thought were important, some adaptations that I thought could work for a wide group of people. Um, like I said, with painting, it's very broad. There's a lot of other things you can do, and you can maybe even take some of my ideas and advance them further because it really just depends on the individual and their needs, um, what exactly you'll do, because what can work for some person might not work for another person, but I hope you learned something, and thanks for watching.